into your way. I say yes, Lord, yes. I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I'll agree. And my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. Oh, I say yes, Lord, yes, to your will and to your way. I say yes, Lord, yes, I will trust you and obey. When your spirit speaks to me, with my whole heart I agree, and my answer will be yes, Lord, yes. Hallelujah, Lord, we come before you this day, and our answer is yes, Lord, hallelujah. Our answer is yes, Lord, to you. Lord, we come to serve you in spirit and in truth. And Lord, because of that, we repent even now, God, for our slowfulness, God, for our slack ways, God, for our disobedience, Lord, for our rebellion, Father, for our not having an ear, God, attentive to the words that you are speaking to us through the word of God and by the Holy Spirit. And so, Lord, on this day, we come, oh God, just to be made new in the name of Jesus, God. It comes from the renewing, oh God, of our minds in this word. And so, Father, we pray now that we receive your word, God. We cast out every stronghold and imagination that tries to exalt itself against the fear and knowledge of Jesus Christ. And Lord, we come with a yes unto you in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we pray even now. Father, for the songs that are saying, God, the words that are spoken, all to be pleasing in your sight. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, have your way. Have your way in us. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. Greetings. You are here at Sure Word Fellowship. I'm Pastor Gloria Dennis, and uh, we are here for our word and worship. You're joining in with us. Go ahead and get ready for a wonderful time in the presence of the Lord. Wherever you may be, amen, that's where you can make your uh, place of worship. Remember that even in Bible times, they would take an, a rock and make an altar. Whether it was by a riverside, they found that place and said, that's where I will serve the Lord. And so we're so grateful for you, you and you coming out with us on today to serve the Lord. Hallelujah. The word says, I have decided to follow Jesus. I have decided to follow Jesus. Oh, 
live. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. So just go ahead. We're going right into the word. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. You're so faithful. Glory to God. You're so faithful. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. John chapter 15 is where we're going to start at. Glory to God. Hallelujah. John chapter 15. Hallelujah. Oh, my God. Glory to God. You're so good, Father. You're so good to us. You're so good to us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We're going to read John chapter 15, and then we're going back over to Luke chapter 19. John chapter 15. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Ooh, it says, I am the vine. John chapter 15, verse 1. I'm reading it from the King James Version. I am the vine, and my father is the husbandman. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he taketh away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purgeth it, that it may bring forth more fruit. Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me and I in you, as the branch can not bear fruit of itself. Except it abide in the vine, no more can ye, except ye abide in me. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We've got a word that we're coming from on today. I'm using the, the topic accommodation. Accommodation. And accommodation is a different word than abide. So we're going to talk about accommodations. Glory to God. He said, I am the true vine. And my father is the husband man. This is Jesus. He said, I am the truth. So that means there are other vines that are of their fathers. But he says, I am the true one. And my father is the husband man. He is the one that takes care of the vineyard. Every branch in me that bears not fruit, he takes away. He said, my father does this. I'm just the vine. But if you don't abide in the vine, my father will take you away. And every branch that bears fruit, he purges it. So there's a purpose for the purging. If we're in God through Christ Jesus, he said that the father will purge it, that it may bring forth more fruit. So what you're going through is not bringing forth more fruit in your life of faithfulness, more fruit in your life of truth. Then have mercy on where you are concerning this relationship. He says now in verse 3, Now ye are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Now this word that he spoke was that I am the true vine. And that you abide in me so that you can produce fruit. And if you're not bearing fruit, the Father will take you away. And if you are in me and you are being purged, the purpose of the purging is to bring forth more fruit. And he says, now, if you receive this and you abide in me, you are clean through the words which I have spoken. And what does this word go on to say? It says, abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit of itself. Except it abide in the vine. No more can you.
The word of God says that except you stay with Christ, you will not survive because he says, my father is the one who will purge the branch. Glory to God. Turn with me now over. Keep this in mind because we're going back over here to John chapter 15, verse 4, where he says, abide in me and I in you. But turn back with me to Luke chapter 19. And in Luke chapter 19, this is a story, uh, that an account that truly did happen in Scripture. It's not a fable, and it's not a parable. It is a true account. Luke chapter 19, beginning at verse 1. And I'm going to read from the King James Version, but if you have the New Living Translation, you'll be right on time with what else we've got to say on today. It says here in, in uh, Luke chapter 19 that Jesus met with a fellow when he was on his way in Jericho. And Jesus entered and passed through Jericho. And behold, there was a man named Zacchaeus, which was the chief among the publicans and he was rich. Now this is how the reputation of Zacchaeus went out. That he was chief among the publicans. And he was rich. So his money spoke for him as he was chief among the publicans. And he sought to see Jesus who he was and could not for the press because he was little of stature. So this was a short, rich man. And he ran before and climbed up into a sycamore tree to see him, for he was to pass that way. And when Jesus came to the place, he looked up and saw him and said unto him, Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. For today I must abide at thy house. Our key verse here is Zacchaeus, make haste and come down. For today I must abide at thy house. When we talk about accommodations, the first thing that comes to mind for me is a hotel. Because uh, need a double bed or a king single. If you tell them about if it's important to you to have a microwave and a refrigerator in your room, if it's important to you to have an ironing board and a coffee maker in the room, these are all accommodations. That means that it is something that is provided for you temporarily. It means that you're just passing through and they made accommodations. Accommodations also speaks to how uh, when it's provided for you, it is already thought of as being for short-term use. Because remember, when you uh, get a, and now think about some of the things that are accommodations in a hotel, the coffee maker usually is a very small coffee maker. It's not something that you would use permanently at your home. 
when you think about accommodations, you think about how it is provided for a guest. And the definition between a guest while the other has a short-term stay, accommodation. But Jesus didn't use that word in John chapter 15. He said, abide in me and I in you. And when he said, abide in me and I in you, because the branch cannot bear fruit unless it remains. The abide here means to have a permanent residence. The abide here means to get there and stay there. The abide here means that except you be in me and I in you, your life is fruitless. There is no productivity and therefore there will be no reward. What are you saying then, Pastor Dennis? I'm saying that when we meet with an encounter with Jesus, we don't need to be talking about accommodations as in, I've got to make time to study the word. And I'll do it for a little while and see if it works for me. I got to make time to say thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Because my mouth wants to talk about everything else. When David said, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praise shall continually be in my mouth, he was talking about abiding and staying in a place and not talking about making an accommodation for the master. As we look in times like these, we have folks when there was 9-11, folks made accommodations. We packed out the churches more than we had in recent months. When uh, COVID-19 hit, we made some accommodations to be in prayer over the telephone, but they were accommodations. But we've got to get to the place in God as believers, as those that are striving to live a life pleasing before him, that we find an abiding. Abiding means to remain. Abiding means to be fixed, to tarry there. It means to hold that place in reference. To wait right there until our change comes. If I'm going to abide, I'm going to dwell in that place. In him and he can dwell in us. But as long as we are making, we are, quote unquote, abiding, we'll have fruit and life, and God will continue to change us from glory to glory and from faith to faith. But if we're just thinking of Christ and thinking of the church as we're just making an accommodation in our life right now, while things are going on right now, but then when things are good, I'm going to get fat and forget you, there's a problem.
But we have some importance here that comes from the example with Zacchaeus. Zacchaeus was short and he was rich. Well regarded among the publicans and top of the tax collectors. But Zacchaeus had one thing that he knew and that was that he needed to meet the Lord. He had heard about this Jesus and because of the crowd, I don't care how rich he is, because of the crowd, Zacchaeus had a challenge getting to Jesus. His money wasn't buying him a place at the feet of Jesus. But Jesus saw him as he ran before for the crowd and climbed into a sycamore tree. Let's keep on reading about this Zacchaeus. For in verse 5, when Jesus saw him, he said, Make haste and come down, for today I must abide at thy house. This is a prophetic word because we just talked about he didn't say, I'm not going to just drop by. He said, I'm going to abide. I'm going to dwell. I'm going to stay at your house. And so Zacchaeus in verse number six of Luke 19 says, and he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. Hmm. And when they saw it, they all murmured saying, that he was gone to be guest with a man that is a sinner. Now, this, we talk about the days. The they. When they saw that Jesus addressed Zacchaeus, called him by name, and said, today, I must abide. I must dwell in your house. They in their flesh said, he's going to be a guest. He's gone for accommodations, remember, temporarily, to be with a man that is a sinner. And Zacchaeus stood and said unto the Lord, Lord, behold, Lord, the half of my goods I give to the poor. And if I have taken anything from any man by false accusation, I restore him fourfold. That means if I cheated in man, this is an I'll read it from the, 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 the New Living Translation. Meanwhile, Zacchaeus stood before the Lord and said, I will give half of my wealth to the poor. That means, Lord, I may be rich here, but I need riches that are not just accommodations on earth. I need riches that will last me forever. I'm determined to put my treasure where moth and rust will not corrupt. I will give half of my wealth to the poor. And if I have cheated any people of their taxes, I will give them back four times as much. Now, it's going to take the other half of his wealth just to do that. Because remember, that's what tax collectors did. Mm -hmm. they, they took more than what was required so that they can cushion their pockets. But here's Zacchaeus saying that I made it a priority to climb up in the tree so that I could see Jesus. I had to get out of my low state, even though I was rich, and I had to climb up to a place where I could see him, and then Jesus said, today, I must abide at your house. Today, I must dwell there. All right, so then he goes over here and says, I will restore unto them fourfold. And back then, you know how when you've done something wrong, you would say, well, I'll give you double for it. You know, it, we have a, like what we call a money back guarantee. So if you are not satisfied with the product, we'll give you your money back plus 10%. I know one store that does that. They said, if you can find this product cheaper at any other store, we'll give you an additional 10% off 
of this product. And so Zacchaeus being a chief of the publicans and a chief of the tax collectors and very rich says, hey, if I got my riches through false gain, Lord, because I'm having you to dwell in my house, abide in my house, I will give back four times. That's the money back guarantee. Four times what was given. Father, I thank you. So he had a repentant spirit when he heard the word of God coming, protruding from Jesus saying, today I must dwell at your house. And Jesus said unto him, this day is salvation come to this house. For so much as he is also is a son of Abraham. For the son of man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. And I'm going to stop right there because we're going to speak a minute about this accommodation. He says, Jesus says that today salvation, deliverance, the word of life has come to you. He says, the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that which was lost. What do I mean by that which was lost? That which is lost is something that is already destroyed because it is already set to be put to death. It is already set for misery eternally in hell. It is already set for torment. And Jesus Christ came that we would have life and have it more abundantly. But the reason he came was not for us to make accommodation for him, but for us to abide in him so that his word can abide in us and that we can produce fruit. So yes, there are going to be some times where there's going to be some purging. The Father is purging us so that we can bear more fruit. Yes, there's going to be some trials and tribulations that are going to come because the trying of your faith is going to work patience and patience will have its perfect work in you and that patience will cause you to go from faith to faith. It will strengthen you and it will settle you and it will strengthen you that you will know that you truly decided to follow the Lord. For he who puts his hand to the plow and looks back is not fit for the kingdom. He said, except you abide in me and except my word abide in you, except you stay. Don't make accommodations. Don't make a temporary fix. But except you stay, except you abide, you'll be lost. And what is that loss? That loss is the end. That loss is an end. And we don't want an end. Hallelujah. We want the word of God to dwell in us richly in all wisdom and all knowledge and understanding that we can do the will of God. Hallelujah. We want the will of God done in our lives. And except we abide. Hallelujah. Except we abide. Except we stay. Except we dwell. Because the Lord has already said, regardless of your state, remember Zacchaeus is a sinner when Jesus speaks to him and says, today I must abide in your house. So there is no excuse for us. He comes to save sinners. He says, I come to save that which was lost. I come to save those who need a God to forgive them, for them to repent. Glory to God. He doesn't come for those that don't feel that they don't need anything. He comes for those that need salvation. And so we thank the Lord that even on this day, that we abide in him. And that there's a prophetic word over us. Because behold, he stands at the door and he knocks. If any man will let him come in, he will abide there. He will stay there. He will never leave you nor forsake you. 
and you can be in him. In him you can live. In him you can move. And in him you can have your being. In him you can have life and have it more abundantly. He's calling you out. Glory to God. He's calling you out. He's calling you to life. Eternal life in him. And if we're going to talk about freedom on July 4th, we need to talk about free to praise him. We need to talk about having a liberty in the Lord. We need to talk about that we are no longer entangled with the yoke of bondage. We need to talk about that we are not already bound for hell. We can abide. So let not your accommodations be for him. He said, even don't make even provisions for the flesh that you will fulfill the lust thereof, but let's dwell in the secret place of the Lord. Let's go in amen, and stay in. Glory to God. We say Psalm 91, but he that abides in the shadow of the Lord under the Almighty, under his wings, shall we trust. Stay there. Get in there and stay there. Hallelujah. Let the Lord be your God. Hallelujah. So, Father, we're praying even now, Lord, because there is a Zacchaeus anointing. Father, that we would repent of the things that we have done, turn from our wicked ways, and go after you, God. So we pray even now, Father, in the name of Jesus, that, Lord God, we choose to walk holy before you. We choose to walk righteously before you in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, dwell in us. Hallelujah. Abide in us, God. We welcome the anointing of the Holy Ghost to abide in us. Hallelujah. And, Father, we won't make accommodations for this flesh that we would fulfill the lust of it, but we're choosing to walk in the spirit. Hallelujah. For in the spirit, we have life. In the spirit, we have victory. Hallelujah. In the spirit, we win. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And so we thank you, Father. Hallelujah. That our eyes are fixed. Our mind is made up, God. Our heart is going all the way with you. Glory to God. We are going all the way with you in the name of Jesus. Father, we have went ahead of the crowd. Hallelujah. Father, we made our press in, glory to God, that we would know you. Hallelujah. And the power of the resurrection. For we choose to abide. We choose to abide. We choose to put our hand in yours, God, and we choose to let it stay there. Glory to God. And Lord God, as we make the vow with you, God, hallelujah, that we would be there, oh God, hallelujah. We made a vow unto you, oh God, hallelujah. And we thank you, Lord God, that it is you that stands in the gap with us that we would keep that vow. Hallelujah. Oh, God, we're promising to serve you until we die, God. We're promising to be on this battlefield, God, until we close our eyes on this side and open them up in the victory. Hallelujah. Of knowing that, oh, God, we have, hallelujah, everlasting life in you. Father, we thank you even now. Lord, we pray for every sinner. Lord, there's a Zacchaeus out there that has gotten rich off of things. Father, they may have cheated somebody out of something to get what they have now. But, Lord God, let them be repentant in their heart. Father, we apply the word now even to their heart. Because what is it to gain this world and not have Christ? Hallelujah. Father, Zacchaeus is our example. To say that half of the goods plus that that I've cheated anybody to give it back four times. Lord God, let that anointing be upon us. That, Lord God, we would walk in love. And owe no man nothing but to love them. And Lord God, that we would abide. Not make accommodations, but abide. In the name of Jesus. Lord God, we're not looking back, but we're holding on to your unchanging hand. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. And if that is you, you are you on this day. Hallelujah. That is chosen to abide. Hallelujah. Jesus' name. Except you abide in me, the true vine, you will not bear fruit. Your life would be fruitless. So we thank you even now, Father, for those that are listening in, that are choosing that their life would mean something, that their living would not be in vain, 
But, Lord God, that there are fruit that abounds to their account. And, Lord God, that they will lift their eyes up. Glory unto you, O God. Hallelujah. And see the king of glory coming in. Hallelujah. And taking residence in the name of Jesus. So we thank you for it, Father. We give you praise, honor, and glory for all that you're doing in the midst of us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. That is you on today. Contact us here at Sure Word Fellowship and say, Pastor Dennis, I made the decision that I would abide in Christ. Hallelujah. And say, all the way, I'm going all the way. All the way, I'm going all the way. I'm going all the way. Oh, I made my decision. I'm going all the way. No turning back. I'm going all the way. I'm going all the way with the Lord. I'm going all the way with the Lord. Hallelujah. One more time. All the way. I'm going all the way. All the way. I'm going all the way. I'm going all the way with the Lord. I'm going all the way with the Lord. decided that we're going all the way with the Lord. So Father, your word says that you, oh God, you blessed us with tithe and you blessed us with offering. You blessed us with free will gifts that we can give unto you. And that Lord, you love a cheerful giver. And so we stand in agreement on this day, God. For what your word says. And we declare. That for the tither. You rebuke the devourer. By our saints. You open up the windows of heaven. And you pour out the blessing. That we don't have room enough to receive. Father we agree. With what your word says. Because your word has promised. And it is an abiding word. It is an abiding word. It's a never failing word. That Lord is you rebuke the devour and you open up windows of heaven that impart blessings that we don't have room enough to receive. Lord you said that men will look at us and call us a delightsome land. Hallelujah. So Lord we declare that we are the testimony before men because of our giving. Lord, even as we have our off, Father, we thank you because you said that we give it out of free will. 
not out of compulsion, God. And so we thank you, Lord God, that as we have our offering today, that, Lord, this offering is unto you in thanksgiving. This offering is unto you, God, as we celebrate freedom to praise you. For, Father, there are some that have to praise you in secret. Father, there are some that cannot do an open Thank you, Jesus, for fear of their lives. But Lord, this having the ability to say thank you and worship you and come into a place in daylight and say thank you. We don't take it for granted, but we know that that freedom was fought for. So for every prayer warrior, every intercessor, Father, every believer, we stand in agreement with them. And Father, we remember the persecuted church worldwide, the missionaries that are going behind curtains to minister the gospel. Father, remembering them and their families that they counted their life as nothing for the gospel to be preached. We pray for them. We pray long life when you satisfy them and show them your salvation. And Father, that they have even more opportunity, as Paul prayed, to preach the gospel. And even for us, in Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Thank you. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Just remembering that for our, we have our National Ice Cream Day coming up on July the 17th, and then we will be having Vacation Bible School after that, and the Vacation Bible School, we will have it on our free conference call line where you can watch it by video, and we'll put that link out on our uh, Facebook page. And we'll put that link out, even hopefully we'll be able to see it on our YouTube page and join in with us for our Vacation Bible School. But remember, July 17th from 12 to 3 is National Ice Cream Day right here at Sherwood Fellowship, 1500 Northwest 143rd Street in Jonesville. Glory to God. Hallelujah. We thank God for all of our saints, amen, that are here, and those that have been traveling, and we pray you know, God's blessing upon you, you, and you. Hallelujah. May Prosperity within.